What's going on, Mass Gang? Hey guys. My name is Brian. This is my husband, Alec. And we have the Brown Bros again. What's up? Haven't seen you guys in so long. Lorenzo. And this is. Yes, dude. What's up, y'all? You say you haven't seen us? Well? Yeah, I haven't seen you guys in so long. Yeah. Uh, I know, but it's good to see y'all, though. Right. <laughs> it felt like an eternity ago. Right. <laughs> Always good to have you guys yes. here. Yes, yes. So guys, we're gonna jump right in. We are currently in November and we know that this is a huge holiday season. You have Thanksgiving and then you have Christmas right after. Mm -hmm. Speaking of holidays, we're gonna be giving you guys a little bit of a gift idea from our sponsors of today's video, Babbel. Yes. Babbel is one of the top language learning apps in the world with intuitive lessons that help you learn a language through real life conversations. Brian and I started our language learning journey a few weeks ago, and it has been such a fun way to learn something new together. Babbel is scientifically proven to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. And the lessons are prepared by real language teachers. Babbel prepares you for day-to-day real-world conversations. They also have a few subscriptions to choose from, including Babbel for Two a gift for yourself and a friend to learn a new language together. Soy de Chicago. Soy de Chicago. <laughs> Donde esta Monterrey? Donde esta Monterrey? En que trabajas? En que trabajas? We all have that friend on the gift list that is difficult to shop for. Why not give them a subscription from Babu? Babbel is offering our subscribers 70% off for you and a friend. So, click the link in the description box below and get started on your language learning journey today. Thanks, Babbel. Thank you. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're going to jump right into today's topic. Today, we are going to be talking about the LGBTQ plus experience during the holidays. So I personally love the holidays. This is my favorite time of year, but we do realize and understand that not everybody else feels the same way. For many people in our community, they actually feel triggered when it comes down to the holiday season. Yeah. So I'm gonna put you guys on a hot seat mm -hmm. and we're gonna ask you guys to just tell us a little bit about your coming out story and what that was like with your families in particular. Wow, so we get straight into it. <laughs> and, um, my coming out story. So first, okay, so it's funny to be talking about holiday season and being around family and so on. Um, I believe that because of uh, our sexual orientation, I, ha I, in some aspect, was forced to make my own family or find my own family. Um, as you know, in the if you've probably heard about it, you've seen it in polls. If you're a, a real viewer, you mm -hmm. know that mm -hmm. we have stuff like the gay families and, and so on. Mine wasn't necessarily a gay family. I had a, a gay br brother, uh, best friend at the time that I came out to more so in high school. We, we related and um, we just kind of saw a lot of commonalities between the, the mm -hmm. both of us. It came down to like even our siblings had all been named the D's, mm. you know? So it was like, we had that thing. We just really grew tight together. So that was my gay family. It was just me and him. Mm -hmm. And then I moved out of town and found my own family here in Florida. So, um, and when I came here 10 years ago, I came out without really coming out. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> it was, was crazy. Like... It was just, I posted a picture <laughs> with myself and the guy that I was dating at the time. It was on Facebook, my profile picture. And, People were inquiring and I just let them know it's my so name. So you broke the internet. He was my man. <laughs> my man, my man, my, my man. My man, my man, my man. <laughs> <laughs> and I was going to stick beside him. <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, from there, I was out. I, I didn't have to disclose much. People <clears throat> figured it out and, and I just kind of lived my truth. I really, it really just was about me being authentic and just free. So there so, was no, no question from your family about it? Not really. I didn't get too much pushback. Some people asked me, like, you know, that some people already had known, had known growing up that there were signs of it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, eventually it just came down to, I think it was my mom that's the hardest one for me to have to do, but she also found out, like everybody else found out. Mm. So, um, there was that. There was people I was out to in the family, um, in some aspects, but I was out. 
And after being out, I never wanted to go back. <laughs> 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 Let's just call it what it is. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, Sir Victor. I think my story is kind of similar a little bit, but not as much. I came out later, mm -hmm. as you guys know. Mm -hmm. I was a little older when I came out, but I would say my mom was probably the hardest to understand. Because she's always, you know, I want kids, grandkids, because I'm gay. Does that mean I still can get grandkids? I'm like, absolutely. You can still be gay and still have grandkids. So mm -hmm. I think that was her main concern. And I recently came up to my dad, maybe like two years ago, mm -hmm. which I was totally shocked by his situation because that's my dad. And I, you know, I'm his yeah. only son, of course. Yeah. So it's kind of just like, well, what is it? And I was like, what do you mean? This is what I like. And this is my life and he accepted it, which I appreciated that because I was expecting something completely different. And I think it was different, but I don't know. I don't know. I think also like far as my dad's side of the family, they don't accept it. Mm -hmm. I got bullied growing up as a kid. Mm -hmm. So I had to hide a lot of who I was, which is a lot of the reason why I did come out later, just okay. based off of that. Okay. I'm glad that you said that though, that <clears throat> you got bullied when you were younger because a lot of people don't realize, like people would probably want to say that anybody can have the holidays trigger them, but we're speaking to our experience as gay people in particular. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of the times before we even know what our sexuality is, people impose that yes. on you yes, yes, yes. and treat you differently because of it. Mm -hmm. And what makes it harder to digest is the fact that these are people that are your blood. Yeah. So you would think that they should accept you regardless. But many times they are they the don't. first point of contact when it comes to discrimination. They don't mm -hmm. accept it. And I think once I finally came out, I, it was crazy how I did it because I went to each, indi each individual friend, like friend I had, who I thought didn't know, but they already knew. Mm -hmm. So they was like, oh, we just wait for you to tell us. I'm like, well, wow, I'm really like <laughs> hyping myself up for no reason, like being nervous or being like self-conscious, like, oh my God, well, what if they reject me? You know, I had that in my mind, like that was a fear of mine. So I went to each individual and told them, and they all said, we knew. Just took the window to your yeah, I was like, okay, girl, we good to go now. Y'all want to get some drinks. <laughs> Tell me something we don't know. Right. <laughs> okay, so. How has interacting with your family, particularly during this time, changed since coming out? So I know you kind of alluded to it because you said that for you, you formed new family. So when it comes to the holidays, what's your interaction with your blood family like? Um, now it's more of me doing the reaching out in a lot of cases because um, around those times you can't help but to miss you know, mm -hmm. with the Mr. Bloodline. Um, I'm very happy and I don't, I wouldn't change the way it is right now for the world because the people in my life right now are, they were the ones to really help carry the burden. Mm -hmm. um, and let's just, be, let's call it what it is. They help carry the burden because, you know, unfortunately my truth is that in my family, um, it wasn't accepted, um, it wasn't talked about wasn't dressed really it was more so something that we wanted to hide and you know sleep under the rug if we could mm -hmm. and then or also denying what they know to be true like you know what i mean like just denial mm -hmm. and, and that's a big issue yeah that that you know and i get it like but i'm glad i like i said i would not trade it for the world child like mm -hmm. my interaction with my family now that i that i earned and gained um by way of my journey here in Florida, um, it's perfect. Like, I, I wouldn't change it for the world. <clears throat> I wish that I could interact with my family members to that, but you know, I feel as though there's a lot of work to be done on that side of the fence or, you know, of the family mm -hmm. or the bloodline, if that makes sense. Are but, those the ones who don't necessarily accept it or? Well, they have come a long way. Mm -hmm. um, but then again, I gotta see it from their side too. Because as soon, soon as I finally stepped into what I knew to be my truth, it didn't even matter. I don't remember if I heard the noise still. Like, I didn't hear all of what... It affected you a lot less. Yeah, it affected me a lot less. And then it was just like, okay, they, 
they can't help but to love that I own my, I have no shame in my game. I walk mm -hmm. confidently. I'm happy, you know, yeah. for, for what is to perceive to be like fully happy with who I am and, and what my truth is. So um, honestly, that's what it came down to. Like, yeah. Okay. And um, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> It's how your interaction with your family has changed since you giving them that confirmation of what they might have already known. Um, so far as my, my dad's side that doesn't accept, I think that's dead to me, if that makes sense. Like there's mm -hmm. no communication on holidays. There's really no communication at all because they don't accept it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and I respect that. That's their opinion. Even my sister she stopped talking to me once she did find out I was gay. Mm -hmm. So that was another thing as well. It hurts because those are your family members and those are people, you know, you grew up with them, that's blood. And for them to disown you like that, just over your, over you living your truth and being comfortable in your skin and being happy, everything else, bo it bothered me. Like I had to go to therapy over that because mm -hmm. I was just like, well, wow, well, like, what did I do? You know, for people to turn it back on me, but once I did all of that, did therapy, and finally like realized, you know what, it's the season. That season has ended, mm -hmm. and I have my own family now. Mm -hmm. Like far as like you guys, mm -hmm. ever since I probably was what early twenties, I've been with Brian. Mm -hmm. yeah. given, if it's not with him, it's with his family. If it's not with his family, it's with a group of friends, and it's always been like that. So I've never really felt alone on the holidays. Mm -hmm. um, I will say. As far as my dad, he does his own thing, so he doesn't really cook. He's like, he's a man, so he don't, he don't, he don't really cook. He's like this, he don't do he's that, man, but man, he's a man's man. Man's cook. Y'all cook, but he don't cook. So it's like, I'll go spend time with him, but that's mm -hmm. it. And also, I can appreciate the fact that he accepts me for who I am. Like, there's yeah. no issue. Like, he doesn't treat me no differently. And I also educate him on certain things, too. Like, when it comes to, like, the lifestyle and certain things that he should yeah. know. And that's good. That's, like, very important that you also make sure that mm -hmm. you educate him as you just said a while ago but mm -hmm. and you know it's always the person that you least expect that yeah, like scared. I, I was really scared he was the last person i told even when you told me i was shocked at his reaction like i was just like what i was like wait a minute let me hang this yeah up and <laughs> call you, back what i think is amazing though is like it's it's a gift and a curse because in the i don't know if it's just black families or if it's all families but they say love is unconditional, but your story is a prime example that there is conditions to, to love. Yes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I think that's unfortunate, but your dad, good or bad, like y'all are in and y'all are out, yeah. but he still accepted you regardless. And I feel like that built our relationship even stronger. Because you know me and my mm -hmm. dad, we have the best relationship. Mm -hmm. But once I finally start living my truth and being who I am and being comfortable, all of that has changed. Yeah. You gave him no choice it's, it's but changed. to respect Either you. you accept it or mm -hmm. you know. And he know I don't have a problem with like cutting. Mm -hmm. I will cut those ties. <laughs> I will chop you. Oh. And you gotta go. <laughs> and that's it. Yeah. That's the Capricorn in me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know that you probably have um, a take Ooh. on this topic too. Yeah, I do. Um, I don't look forward to the holidays with my family i know they, if they watch this they're gonna be like what Ooh. but but it's something they need to know <laughs> <laughs> growing up we would have we would watch shows like for example if a movie was out low down dirty shame that's the one that i can remember off the top of my head because they had the character wayman in it mm -hmm. and he was a caricature of what a gay man is god rest his soul but they used to talk about that man so bad they used to, you know, faggot this or, you know, like, excuse my language, but they yeah. would call him all of those names. Yeah. And it made me feel weird on the inside because I'm like, dang, like that's, this is who I resonate with. That. Like, yeah, I want to lay up with a man too. Like, this is, this is who I right. am. So <laughs> I don't necessarily look forward to going down there, especially now that I'm married and in the, the, the way that I came out, it was kind of like what you did you definitely broke the internet i did break the internet. <laughs> yes i did so it was kind of like a, hey this is what it is nobody has said anything to me about my engagement picture yet 
no i think maybe a few of my family members may have said congratulations after i got married to to be exact uh -huh. so i'm not necessarily excited to go down there to see them because it's going to be awkward mm -hmm. don't get me wrong i know that my family loves me and i love them too but i just don't think i have that connection with them yeah I don't feel comfortable. Have own, you have your own family, you know? Yeah, I, I have built that. my own family. Mm -hmm. And part of love, too, is, like, knowing when to let go mm -hmm. of certain things. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's a part of loving yourself, too, yeah. is, you know, there's only so much you can try. Because if it's one thing I've heard from everybody so far, is that even though you would have been the person that had been hurt, you are still the one that has pushed out and tried to keep communication which you know mm. should not be the case but um i mean it's not all sadness because thankfully i know that this sometimes is is not everyone's experience or majority of us but for me holidays still has remained a very positive thing um i came out to my family what less than two years ago hard to believe but yeah. less than two years ago and Brian met them for the first time right before I came out and the year after he came and to me I feel like he was embraced even more than when he was introduced as the friend yeah. as opposed to as my husband to be mm -hmm. and you know I really 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 appreciate my family even for people who weren't so accepting of it when it came down to it at no point did they disrespect Brian or could, yeah. did he feel like, you know, somebody was giving him side eyes or anything like that, right, which right. I really appreciate because that's a gift that not everybody has. Yes. Right. As you can tell, the odds are one in four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. One in four. Yeah. It really is, it is because I know at one point I was dating someone for a little while and I couldn't go over that person's house with their family for the holidays. So I'm legit in the house on holidays, mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. Mm -hmm. They're with their family, but I couldn't participate in that. Yeah. So I was just like, what? Damn. That's is, that really it's, bothered me yeah. mm -hmm. a lot. That really bothered me a lot. Well, um, well, obviously you couldn't bring that person to your family either, right? You At that time, I couldn't, know, no. But still, I would have done it because I feel like that's, mm -hmm. I, was, I was comfortable then but it's just like if we're together i feel like you should at least have some kind of respect yeah. like why can't i meet your family like, or like yeah. some kind of consideration Consider like what yeah, would have been nice is to know you're on my team and like mm -hmm. if i can't go to your family then we're gonna spend this holiday together, together. yeah and i right. guess the way that he figured out we were spending it together was him stopping by maybe for an hour or two mm -hmm. to hang out with me and then leave Damn, no, that don't work. <laughs> <laughs> that does not work. Yeah. But then, too, I guess it, you were a little lonely at that time, but obviously. Yeah, I was very lonely around the yeah. holidays. And especially when Brian had moved at one point, he was down south. Mm -hmm. So I was really here by myself, and my dad would go out of town. So it was just literally just me in the house mm -hmm. with my dog. <clears throat> and that was it. Mm. Maybe with Kelly. That's all. <laughs> and I don't cook like I don't job. cook like that, so I'm just in there eating whatever I can find. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, you guys can tell me if you can relate. But one of the hardest things for me growing up, like especially as a young adult, was going back home to these family gatherings, and then it's like, so where's your girlfriend? Oh God! Are you don't bring anybody home? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think we all been there at one point. I just spoke to my grandma last week. Um, she's part of my dad's side of the family. Uh -huh. I, we have, I haven't really discussed it at all with my dad's side of the family. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's unfortunate to know, but though, that my dad and I don't talk about it. Because you're also from the Caribbean. We don't talk as well. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. from Guyana. So that there's a, the background, <coughs> the Caribbean background there. Um, but yeah, my, I don't talk about it much with my dad's side of the family. I don't talk about it at all with them. Mm -hmm. My dad doesn't talk to me because of it. Mm -hmm. Really? And, yeah. And, um, but, I mean, still love him down. Like, I still love him down. Like, and I think, too, I think he's coming to a point where he misses me. Um, but he just doesn't know how to reach out. So, I'm yeah. giving him his time still to, you know, hopefully he can patch that up. But, 
Um, it's not something that's talked about more so on that side of the building at all. Yeah. I feel you. Child. Are both your parents uh, Guyanese? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> that was funny what you said about the, um, the, the what is it, a microaggression? My microaggression. microaggression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where it's like, you have a... Girlfriend. And the funny thing is, you know, is that they ask these questions when you well and damn know <laughs> that the entire family has already discussed they, your sexuality. Exactly. And it's like they're asking you because they want to watch you squirm. Mm -hmm. No. They want to see what it is that you're gonna <laughs> No, <Right>. no. <laughs> I don't have a girlfriend. He said, tell them why. Tell them why. I got a whole meal. You know, you know. <laughs> That's what you said, child. I was my grandma asked that last week. That's what I was getting to before we went down that path. But no, seriously, she asked me. She's like, "You ain't take nobody yet." That's exactly what I said. Oh. And I was like, "No, Granny, I'm I'm enjoying the single life. It's just me and my dog at home." <laughs> when I mean, when I have but you how many be having in the house? Oh, please. <laughs> 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 Anyways, in this case. I mean, so if it's one thing, though, that I think has come from this entire conversation is that it's extremely important that no matter, no matter where you are, to form family that feels Absolutely. comfortable to you. Yes, mm -hmm. of course. I love my tribe. Oh, yes. yes. Like, yeah. 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 Like mm -hmm. I said, they keep trying, they carry, they help you to carry that burden. They carry the burden. And I'm not saying, and I want to touch back on that, too. Being gay is not a burden. I, my, I want to make that very clear. That's mm -hmm. not my burden. My mm -hmm. my burden is what I endured prior to coming out. Mm -hmm. The feelings you know I mean? of, of not being accepted, the, right. the baggage from having to come all out. All of that, like whether it was um, rejection, whether it was the outing, because you know there there was times where where I mean I could probably relate where we're being outed. Mm -hmm. Oh um, yeah, they love to do that. Mm -hmm. So. That is what I mean by the burden. So I want to make that very clear. That that is what I meant about the family that I have in front of me and home and in the Popka and, and all the <laughs> Orlando mm -hmm. and, and wherever. They carry the burden of that because we're still, you know, uh, healing from those mm -hmm. those things and, and the baggage and all that unpacking. But unpacking, we're yeah. definitely thriving. <laughs> and we're living. Right. In yeah. our truth. Our for truth. For sure. sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then we'll enjoy it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Yeah, well, I mean, this year for me personally, this is my first Christmas away from my family back in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm excited to be able to form new traditions mm -hmm. with my chosen family here because you guys really have done so much in terms of just making me feel comfortable here mm -hmm. I, like it was a smooth transition yeah. and as much as i will miss you know everything that's happening back home mm -hmm. i really 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 appreciate you guys and yeah. you know i just have to course, make that family that's yes cool. that's what cool. we mm -hmm. oh my god right well so just to wrap up this juicy conversation <laughs> what advice would you guys give to somebody out there who might be struggling with the same truth or maybe trying to wrap their head around accepting somebody who might be struggling with this same truth mm. Mm. that's a good one that's a good one <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, you want to start i think up? i think well for me i'm just gonna say um fall in love with who you see in the mirror for mm. sure. And word. when, <laughs> seriously, seriously, fall in love with who you see in the mirror um, first. That's that's that'll pivot you in the next direction. Mm -hmm. And the next, what I'm gonna tell you is, after you fall in love with you, is just remember all of that noise is made up. It's not true. It's not fact. What's facts is what you see in the mirror. And you are beautiful. You are somebody worthy of love. Mm -hmm. um, you are worthy of. You, respecting yourself and loving on yourself and holding people accountable for giving you that love period and you know you may not have to you're not don't feel entitled to it whatever comes whatever happens happens but as long as you love your fucking self excuse my period no, <laughs> we talk about babble and language time <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my language. Translate that. But as long as you love, <laughs> seriously, <clears throat> no, for for real. Oh as long gosh. as you love that person who you see in front of the mirror, that is all that matters. Like, 
and just fall in love with that person. That's what I would say. Yes. Well, damn, next. Does right. anybody well, How am I supposed to compete to right? that? Like, what you want me to say? <laughs> My turn. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, to piggyback off what yeah. you said, absolutely love the person that you see in the mirror, because mm -hmm. that is very important. You have to love you before you can love anybody Start else. Here. Amen. Amen. But also, find you somebody, build a tribe, because you need to talk to them. You cannot hold all of that in because mm -hmm. all it's going to do is destroy you. It can make you a bitter person. It can make you angry. Don't allow that, those naysayers, to tarnish who you are as a person. Yeah. So definitely love who you are. Be true to who you are. But find somebody that you can express these feelings to because holding it in is not healthy mm -hmm. at all. So, you said, so well said, friend. So yeah. well said. Um, there's a quote from one of my favorite movies, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Um, and it says, you accept the love that you think you deserve. So that's why self-worth is so important. Because if you don't feel like you deserve love, you're going to be accepting of anything that is given to you. Mm. We feel a lot of the times that with our blood family, whatever is given to us, we have to accept it. And we really don't. You know, so as you say, again, it's looking in the mirror and loving that person that you're seeing in the mirror. Yeah. And in doing that, you will also find a love that you are really deser mm. deserving of. Facts. And that's very important. That's mm. Make it double. Y'all ain't all of that. <laughs> I don't know what to say this point. <laughs> Y'all cleared everything that needed to be said. It's a 10, 10, 10, 10. 10. <laughs> Try it home. It does, it does hit home. It does hit home. But I just think, like Brian said, find your tribe. Live your truth. Be happy. Don't let nobody knock you down. Like, even if you feel like you're alone, reach out. There are, are places you can reach out to anybody on this couch if you mm -hmm. want to. The links will be below. So if you guys feel like you need to reach out, definitely do that because you're not alone. Mm -hmm. at all. Never. We've all been there. We've all been there. Mm -hmm. Don't go through it by yourself. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guys, if it's one thing that we can all tell you this holiday season, give each other the gift of grace. And that's others and yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as I said, guys, we want to thank you for coming out of again. Yes. <laughs> the Brown Bros Podcast. Mm -hmm. coming, coming, up soon. Soon. coming soon. We got an editing session after this. <laughs> <laughs> but as always, guys, you know that their links are going to be below. Um, yeah. So if you guys like this video, we want you to weigh in. Comment down below. Comment. If you love this video, give us a thumbs up. Please remember if you haven't already to do what? Subscribe! Yeah. Alright guys! Peace out!